the worst thing I think that you can do is try to shame people into voting for you. Uh, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and Bernie Sanders, BBB, they have decided to do just that. And it is around the genocide in Gaza. I, I don't know how more tone deaf you could be, right? Especially Barack Obama. And we're actually going to start out with him. Let's start with Barack Obama because he definitely knows better. Definitely knows better. This is him here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He has some words for the people who don't want to support Kamala Harris because of the genocide. If you're a Christian and, 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 and you, you, you care deeply about the abortion issue, I, I understand that, but... But does that mean you, you'll support somebody who seems to violate pretty much every precept of the Ten Commandments? I, I, if, 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 if you are a service member and, 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 and you're somewhat conservative and, and you're used to voting Republican, I can understand it, but, but somebody who, who genuinely does not believe in duty and honor and does not understand why anybody would would sacrifice themselves on behalf of their country. Why why, why would you do that? I, if 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 you're a Muslim American and, and and you're upset about what's happening in the Middle East, why, why why would you put your faith in somebody who passed a Muslim ban and 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 repeatedly? suggested that somehow you weren't part of our American community. So here's the thing. And I, I told you guys, like, I don't understand uh, the Muslim voters that decided to vote for Donald Trump. Um, I, that is not the direction that I think that you should take. Uh, but I would imagine, again, you know, those particular voters may be a little bit more conservative anyway. Uh, but what Barack Obama fails to mention is the fact that a lot of a lot of Muslim voters are supporting Jill Stein, not Donald Trump. And you really can't like, how can I say this uh, politely? You really can't go to the Muslim community and try to shame them into supporting the same administration that is actively killing their people. Like you, you can't. You, you really can't, right? And I feel like Barack Obama, he knows better because he actually used to be really good on Palestine. A lot of people may not realize this. Barack Obama was good on Palestine until APAC got a hold of him. He actually was pro-Palestinian before APAC got to him. He understood the Palestinian cause and agreed with the Palestinian cause. But once APAC got a hold of him, Barack Obama changed his message. So you can't, this is a bad strategy. Like you cannot say to these people, well, how dare you vote for? And I get it. I don't understand why people would want to support Trump either. But that particular community, you can't guilt trip them for not supporting the administration that is killing their people, starving their people. No food has entered Gaza since October 1st. So you can't, you can't do that to those people. Last night, I asked this question to Mark Lamont Hill, and I said, if somebody killed your family, would you vote for them? If somebody killed your family and they're running for office, would you vote for them? Because I know that I wouldn't. And you, you can't make those people feel guilty for not wanting to do that. They're standing on principle. That's more than I can say for some of us, right? So a bad, bad strategy here. If, if you're an African American or Latino, if you're, if you're from Puerto Rico and, 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 and you see somebody who, whose values seem to indicate that you're not part of their equation, how do you think it's okay? How, how can you tell yourself it's okay as long as our side wins? Well, we can say the same thing about Joe Biden, Barack Obama. We could say the same thing, considering some of the comments and legislation that he passed against uh, African-Americans. We can say the same thing. 
And, and, and it's one thing, and this is something I want people to understand. Like, I don't agree with these comments, but it's, it's one thing to make a comment. It's another thing to actively create legislation that hurts and harms that community. So Joe Biden's crime bills, this is what a lot of people don't realize. There are a number of us in the black community that know people that were directly impacted by Joe Biden's crime bills over weed. It's a plant. So these are the things that, that sometimes people don't think about. But Barack Obama, he knows better. But people can say that same thing about him. And you told people to come out and support Joe Biden, right? So I told you Obama knows better and you'll see that he knows better. Now here's Obama. This is what he said about Palestinians years ago. See, video lives on forever, fam. Right to self-determination. Their right to justice must also be recognized. And put yourself in their shoes. Look at the world through their eyes. It is not fair that a Palestinian child cannot grow up in a state of their own. <laughs> Living their entire lives with the presence of a foreign army that controls the movements not just of those young people, but their parents, their grandparents, every single day. It's not just when settler violence against Palestinians goes unpunished. It's not right to prevent Palestinians from farming their lands or restricting a student's ability to move around the West Bank or displace Palestinian families from their homes. <laughs> Neither occupation nor expulsion is the answer. Just as Israelis built a state in their homeland, Palestinians have a right to be a free people in their own land. See the difference? He knows. He knows a lot about uh, Israel. He knows about Gaza. Again, like I said, Barack Obama knows exactly what was happening to those people. And as much as people want to bring up uh, the genocide in Gaza, this is Obama here talking about the West Bank also. So when people say, when Kamala Harris says, we got to get the hostages back, we got to bring the hostages home, she's limiting Palestinian suffering to Gaza. And she's not talking about the West Bank. That's on purpose. Because when they start to talk about the West Bank, then it's kind of hard to say Israel has a right to defend herself, right? Because Hamas is not in the West Bank. Many of you are probably wondering, what happened to Barack Obama? There's even this part here. People may not remember this. Obama had strong words on Israel and Palestine at his last press conference. Too little, too late. Listen to this. I don't see how this issue gets resolved in a way that maintains Israel as both Jewish and a democracy. Because if you do not have two states, then in some form or fashion, you are extending an occupation. Uh, functionally, you end up having one state in which millions of people are disenfranchised and operate a second class uh, occupant or residence. So you see, notice he mentions the occupation. So he knew exactly what was happening to the Palestinian people. You can't even call them citizens necessarily. The growth of the settlements are creating a reality on the ground that increasingly will make a two-state solution impossible. That was his last press conference. And Sean, 
says 2 a.m. Thoughts. Why is Obama talking about Israel Palestine peace right now? Just before leaving, he was in office for eight goddamn years. So does everybody see you know how they how they do this? And there's something else too. I, I spoke to uh, a viewer of the show uh, earlier who was explaining to me uh, how the Arab uh, American community, particularly in Dearborn, you know, why they didn't come out and heavily support Hillary Clinton the way that they did Joe Biden, the way that they did, they did Obama. And it reminded me of something. Barack Obama, when he was running, remember, he was talking about peace. Remember, he was talking about peace in the Middle East and all that stuff. And like, he really sounded really progressive. Everybody remember? So they heavily came out and supported Barack Obama's campaign in 08. And then Obama got elected. And guess what he did? He bombed Syria. He started bombing Syria. So how do you think that made uh, Muslim voters feel that came out and supported Barack Obama? How do you think that made them feel? So there's that. Then Hillary Clinton decides to run for president after Barack Obama. Remember, Hillary Clinton did not win in Michigan. Didn't get Dearborn. I wonder why. Why would they be willing to trust again? Why would they be willing to? Plus, Hillary wasn't even that nice. She didn't have charisma either. So there's that. You can add that to that. And then Trump won. And then there were other things that happened, right? Like the Muslim ban, uh, Trump wanting to, you know, saying, oh, we got to get rid of moving the embassy, et cetera. And then there was that fear. So when Biden ran against Donald Trump, it was okay. We got to get this guy out. We don't know what he's going to do, what else he's going to do to our community. So then they came out and they heavily supported Biden. So Muslim voters right now, a lot of them feel betrayed by the Biden administration. They came out and they delivered for him. I'm going to show you a little bit of the numbers tonight. And they feel that Biden Harris administration betrayed them. Now they have the genocide under this administration. So where are Arab American voters and Muslim voters supposed to go? This is why I continue to say nobody owns your vote. They obviously, a lot of them feel like they don't have a place in the Democratic Party. They, a lot of them feel like they don't have a place in the Republican Party. Remember, after 9-11, there was a lot of Islamophobia. And we're seeing Islamophobia again. So where are they supposed to go? So when they get pushed back because they want to support Jill Stein, it just makes me want to like, you know, pull, pull my hair out. Because I'm like, what do you expect them to do? They came out, they delivered for you, and you betrayed them. But it's not just Barack Obama. Bernie Sanders is also here. He comes. Let me sheep herd you into the Dems, even though they did you so wrong. They did you so wrong. Come on in. I understand that there are millions of Americans who disagree with President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris on the terrible war in Gaza. I am one of them. While Israel had a right to defend itself against the horrific Hamas terrorist attack of October 7th, which killed 1,200 innocent people and took 250 hostages, it did not have the right to wage an all-out war against the entire Palestinian people. It did not have the right to kill 42,000 Palestinians, two-thirds of whom were children, women, and the elderly, or injure over 100,000 people in Gaza. It did not have the right to destroy Gaza's infrastructure, housing, and healthcare system. It did not have the right to bomb every one of Gaza's 12 universities. It did not have the right to block humanitarian aid, causing massive malnutrition in children and, in fact, starvation. And that is why I am doing everything I can to block U.S. military aid and offensive weapon sales to the right-wing extremist Netanyahu government in Israel. And I know that many of you share those feelings. And some of you are saying, how can I vote for Kamala Harris? Pause. So it's the right position to have to want to block the arms, to say no more arms to Israel. When I say no more arms to Israel, I mean, period, not just for a year. Right. But something that people may not be aware of, they already Joe Biden already agreed to support Israel for another 10 years. 
See, this is the thing. And, and I want more people to say this. And I don't mean to like hurt anybody's like feelings. Like those of you who were th thinking we can still push, you know, you can push Kamala Harris left if she were to win. She would have to go in and she would have to destroy that contract, right? Like she would have to say, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore, et cetera. Um, but the reality is part of the reason why they're not going to agree to an arms embargo is because they already had the already made a deal for the next 10 years. There's that. Now they can break it, but I don't think that's going to happen. And then there's APAC, right? Which owns a lot of the politicians in DC. Now listen to what Bernie says. If she is supporting this terrible war, and that is a very fair question. And let me give you my best answer. And that is that even on this issue, Donald Trump and his right wing friends are worse. In the Senate, in Congress, the Republicans have worked overtime to block humanitarian aid to the starving children in Gaza. The president and vice president both support getting as much humanitarian aid into Gaza as soon as possible. Trump has said Netanyahu is doing a good job and has said Biden is holding him back. He has suggested that the Gaza Strip would make excellent beachfront property for development. And it is no one that Netanyahu prefers to have Donald Trump in office. And this is why I say you shouldn't support Trump either. This is exactly why. And one thing I do want to add about the humanitarian aid that Bernie's going to leave out, uh, don't forget that leaked documents did show that Antony Blinken knew that they were not going to bring aid, allow aid uh, and supplies into Gaza. He knew that prior when he met with Netanyahu. Don't forget, Netanyahu snitched on Antony Blinken and said, uh, wait a minute. Um, you knew, I told you that the ministry did not want anything to go into Gaza. So Antony Blinken knew that. Now, Antony Blinken, he's part of the Biden-Harris administration, but Antony Blinken kept that information to himself, or at least between himself and, and Biden and, and Kamala. And then when there were videos showing of aid not getting in there and people starving, it wasn't until then where he got the pressure from the public and the press. Then he said, oh, it's sad what's happening there. Uh, we'll have to investigate it. But he already knew that they weren't going to let the aid in. See, Bernie is not going to mention that. But even more importantly, and this I promise you, after Kamala wins, we will together do everything that we can to change U.S. policy toward Netanyahu. An immediate ceasefire, the return of all hostages, a surge of massive humanitarian aid, the stopping of settler attacks on the West Bank, and the rebuilding of Gaza for the Palestinian people. So what Bernie is telling you is that it is now October 31st. So he said, if you, if you elect Kamala Harris, we'll work together and we'll get this done for the Palestinian people. So what happens to all those people in the meantime? Isn't Kamala Harris a part of the current administration? She said she agreed with everything Joe Biden did. She said she wouldn't do anything differently. That's what she said on The View. So in the month of November and December, they're not going to get any food. They're not going to get any aid. They're just supposed to die. What happens between now and then? And why do you have to elect someone in order for those people to be treated like human beings when Kamala Harris is already a part of the administration? You see, they think that we're dumb, but we're not. And let me be clear. We will have, in my view, a much better chance of changing U.S. policy with Kamala than with Trump, who is extremely close to Netanyahu and sees him as a like-minded right-wing extremist ally. But let me also say this, and I deal with this every single day as a U.S. Senator. As important as Gaza is, and as strongly as many of us feel about this issue, it is not the only issue at stake in this election. Here if we go. Trump wins, women in this country will suffer an enormous setback and lose the ability to control their own bodies. That is not acceptable. It's not, but this is exactly why, you know, you should be having this conversation with Barack Obama. And I want to bring up something. People may not remember this, but remember at one point in time, 
Bernie Sanders wanted to challenge Barack Obama. Now, he decided not to do that. But when Barack Obama was about to run for reelection, Bernie Sanders considered challenging Barack Obama because Barack Obama wasn't as progressive as he claimed that he was going to be. Barack Obama is the reason why we got here. Barack Obama is the reason why we got Donald Trump. Barack Obama is the reason why Roe v. Wade was not codified. He, he ran on it. He said that was the number one thing that he would do. Now, Bernie, you out here, y'all out here pointing your fingers at voters. You're out there pointing your fingers at us. You need to be pointing fingers at Barack Obama. That's who you need to be talking to. If Trump wins, to be honest with you, the struggle against climate change is over. While virtually every scientist who has studied the issue understands that climate change is real and an existential threat to our country and the world, Trump believes it is a hoax. And if the United States, the largest economy in the world, stops transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel, every other country, China, Europe, all over the world, they will do exactly the same thing. Well, first of all, if you guys care that much about climate change as you say that you do, Bernie Sanders, then Kamala Harris wouldn't be supporting fracking. Joe Biden wouldn't have approved the Willow Project on indigenous land, by the way. If you guys care, if this, if the climate issue is so important to you, you would not be supporting fracking. You would not be supporting the Willow Project on indigenous land if it is that important. You guys put corporate interests in the climate bill for fossil fuels. So how are you going to wean off of fossil fuels if you put benefits in the legislation for fossil fuel companies? This makes no sense. And God only knows the kind of planet we will leave to our kids and future generations. If Trump wins at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, he will demand even more tax breaks for the very richest people in our country while cutting back on programs that working families desperately need. The rich will only get richer while the minimum wage will remain at $7.25 an hour and millions of our fellow workers will continue to earn starvation wages. I'm sorry. What happened with the minimum wage under Biden and Harris? Wasn't it voted down? I mean, you know, it just, I, I just can't. I, I just can't. Why the hell? And let's think about this. Why the hell has the minimum wage been $7.25 for all these years? I think it's since what, 09 or something? Why, why has it been $7.25 for all these years? This is not all just because of Donald Trump. You can put blame on Donald Trump where there needs to be put blame for things that happened under his presidency. But the things that happened before him under the Obama administration, that's not fair to put that blame on him for. And that's what drives me crazy. Now, I seem to remember there being a vote for the $15 minimum wage. And I seem to remember it being voted down. Because you guys pulled it out of the infrastructure package and said, no, let it let it do it on its own. We're going to run that as a separate thing. And just as we had predicted, it would be voted down. And you know what? Of course, I expected the Republicans to vote against it, but there were Democrats that voted against it. Democrat senators that voted against that minimum wage bill. And don't forget about our convenient friend, the parliamentarian that the president can get rid of at any time if they're not happy with them, by the way. So it just, I can't even believe you brought up the minimum wage. Did you all see the recent Trump rally at Madison Square Garden? Well, I did. And what I can tell you is that as a nation, as all of you know, we have struggled for years against impossible odds to try to overcome all forms of bigotry whether it is racism, whether it's sexism, whether it's homophobia, whether it's xenophobia, you name it. We have tried to fight against bigotry. But that is exactly what we saw on display at that unbelievable Trump rally. Did you fight against bigotry when you allowed Israelis to speak at the Democratic National Convention, but you told the Palestinians they couldn't get on the stage? Too soon? Were you fighting against bigotry then? Were you fighting against discrimination then? Come on, man. 
come on, man. Bernie Sanders trying to shame you. You got to come out and support Kamala Harris. You know, Bernie does his usual. But the worst of the worst was Bill Clinton, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ. I don't know why anybody thought this was a good idea. Bill Clinton arrives onto the stage in Michigan and listen to what he said about the Palestinian people. Let me talk about the hardest issue here in Michigan is the Middle East. And I have to be careful what I say because there's only one president at a time and none of us can get ahead of where we're going. But I think we're gonna have to essentially start again on the peace process. And I understand why young Palestinian and Arab Americans in Michigan are, think too many people have died. Since I, I get that. But if you lived in one of those kibbutz in in Israel, right next to Gaza, where the people there were the most pro-friendship with Palestine, most pro-two-state solution of any of the Israeli communities were the ones right next to Gaza. And Hamas butchered them. And so then, the people who criticize it are essentially saying, yeah, but look how many people you've killed in Ritalin. So how many is enough for you to kill to punish them for the terrible things they did? That all sounds nice until you realize what would you do if it was your family and you hadn't done anything but support a homeland for the Palestinians and one day they come for you and slaughter the people in your village you would say, well, you will have to forgive me. I'm not keeping score that way. So ladies and gentlemen, here is Bill Clinton making excuses for genocide. In Michigan. Do you guys think this was a good idea? I don't think it's a good idea. Why is Bill Clinton on the campaign trail? Of all the people, why are you letting Bill speak? Horrible, horrible, because what Bill Clinton is saying to you is he's telling you that he believes that one group is better than the other. He goes on, it's not done. It isn't how many we've had to kill because Hamas makes sure that they're shielded by civilians. They'll force you to kill civilians if you want to defend yourself. That was absolutely abhorrent. That was terrible, terrible. And you should see the comments, fam. Like if you look at the comments on the, it just, and Prem uh, Thacker shared this, like people, I just, it, this gets worse. It gets worse. I got news for Hamas. Listen to this. Jeez Louise. It's the Middle East. Hamas did not care about a homeland for the Palestinians. They wanted to kill Israelis and make Israel uninhabitable. Well, I got news for them. They were there first before there was their faith existed, they were there. What the hell? What the hell? So here's Bill Clinton saying they were there first. What? You're gonna pretend like a whole bunch of Europeans didn't come and settle in the Middle East? I, I what? in Michigan.
in the time of King David and the southernmost tribes had Judea and Samaria. So here's what I want to tell you. I'm going to do everything I can to convince people that they cannot murder their way out of this, neither side. They, you can't kill their your way out of this. And they have to make a new beginning. But when I read that people in Michigan are thinking about not voting because they're mad at the Biden administration for honoring his historic obligation to try to keep Israel from being destroyed, I think that's a mistake. Because Donald Trump has shown what he wants. But Kamala Harris has said that she will try to negotiate an end of the violence, an end of the killing, and a new peace process. And that ought to be enough. No, that ought to not be enough because Arab American voters also were asking for an arms embargo, because if you're still giving Israel weapons, they're still going to continue to kill uh, Arab American voters. And I want to let you know, this did not go over well with Care National. Care National posted this here. Uh, Bill Clinton's callous and dishonest attempt to justify the Israeli government attacks on civilians in Gaza was as insulting as it was Islamophobic. So they're calling Bill Clinton's comments Islamophobic Care National. Remember, they're the ones that conducted that poll that showed that the majority of uh, Arab American and Muslim voters wanted to support uh, Jill Stein in a good amount of these swing states, in particular Michigan. So this is not good that this statement is coming from Care National. That is very, 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 very concerning. And all I can tell you guys is two blunders in one week. That is not good for the Democratic Party, whether it's the garbage comment and it's the statement from Bill Clinton. How tone deaf can you actually be in Michigan?